Welcome to this VR scans demonstration. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the VR scans technology together with the VR scans material library. We are going to cover the VR scans material features as well as simple step by step workflow of how we can use the VR scans material in our project. Let's take a look at some of the key features of the VR scans. A VR scans material is generated by capturing thousands of images of a real life material sample. The resulted scanned material is often indistinguishable from the original sample which makes it appear photorealistic. The amount of photographs generated by the high quality hardware captures the material's texture in exceptional quality and detail. Using all this physical data, the VR scans technology captures the material's bidirectional texture function or BTF. This approach is far more advanced and accurate than a single point bidirectional reflectance distribution function also known as BRDF. As a result, VR scans recreate a material's true surface appearance and unique response to light. To recreate a material as physically accurate as possible from the ground up, you need to build a complex shading network which could be daunting and time consuming. VR scans require no prior material building knowledge or use of any reference materials. Setting up a VR scans material is as easy as just drag and drop. On top of that, a scanned material is seamlessly tileable which means you won't get any seams or repeatable patterns when you tile the material over the surface. The VR scans materials can be fine tuned further in terms of appearance directly in SketchUp. You can alter the color of the original scanned material to suit the needs of your scene. Also, you can paint on top of the color or texture without losing the material's properties or affecting the reflection color. You can adjust parameters such as UV tiling and bump strength and you can blend VR scans materials with V-Ray materials as well. The VR scans material plugin is part of V-Ray version 3.6 which provides the user interface for importing, modifying and using the VR scans materials in V-Ray for SketchUp. There is no need for additional installation. Once you purchase a license for the VR Scans plugin, you automatically receive a one year subscription for the VR Scans library. In short, the VR Scans materials are more than just texture maps. Actually, the materials are not based on texture maps at all. They are based on images, thousands of images. They capture the material's physical properties and light behavior under different lighting angles. All of this is packed into a single material file that could be dragged and dropped onto any geometry in your scene. This approach provides incredibly fast workflow when it comes to shading your scene. Let's get started by browsing and downloading a few materials from the VR Scans material library that I'll need for my scene later. The VR Scans library is a repository of pre-scanned materials created by Chaos Group with the VR Scans scanning hardware. The library contains a large quantity of materials, currently around 550, and it's still growing. There are different types of materials broken into categories such as car paint, plastic, wood, leather, metal, and so on. The library is accessible to all VR Scans license holders, and also with the extended 90 day trial, you can use the VR Scans plugin along with the access to the library. To access the VR Scans material library, you need to click on the Downloads button located at the top right corner on the chaosgroup.com webpage. Within the Downloads page, there are a couple of tabs to choose from Software and VR Scans. Simply click on the VR Scans tab. Once in the material library, you can browse and choose materials to download. On the left hand side, there are multiple filters to narrow down the selection of materials. You can filter by material type, material color, also by what is this material most suitable for. For example, automotive, interior design, product design and so on. Let's filter by material type and choose wood. There is a list of all the wood materials available for download in the library. Let's scroll down and choose one of them. Let's click on the large smoke mat for example. On the left hand side, there is a thumbnail preview of the material, which I can click to expand. This way I can examine the material from a closer view. 
If I'm happy with the look of the material, I can simply click on the download button and save it to my hard drive. Let's go back to the materials list and choose another category to filter by. Let's choose fabric. There is a fine collection of fabric materials to choose from. Let's select the fabric gray volumetric material and download it. Following the same procedure, you can browse and download all the materials you need for your project. For the needs of this demonstration, I've downloaded the wood, a leather and one of the car paint materials. Let's make use of the materials I've just downloaded from the material library inside SketchUp. In this scene, I have a simple interior with several chairs hanging from the ceiling. Let's make a test render. Currently, all the assets that I'm about to apply VR scans materials to have a gray V-Ray material assigned to them. Let's get started with the floor material first. Let's switch to the floor camera to have a closer view of the floor. Let me open the asset editor and under the materials tab you can see a list of all the materials currently in the scene. At the lower left corner of the asset editor there is an add material button. Let's select the VR scan material from the list to create it. The first thing that needs to be done is to load a VR scans material. Under the main rollout, there is a button to browse and load the material. Let's find the wood material I've downloaded earlier and load it. Right under the file loader, there is a slider controlling the tiling factor of the material. Let's do a quick render with the default value of 1. We have to apply the material to the floor object first. Select the floor object, right click the material in the asset editor and select apply material to selection. Let's rename the material for more clarity and render the scene. The material styling appears to be too large. Let's increase the tiling factor a little and re-render the scene to see the difference. Now it looks much better. There are few additional controls in the advanced options rollout. There is a two-sided option to force back-facing polygons to be shaded the same way as front ones. This option can be very useful for rendering objects such as curtains. If the two-sided option is disabled, the back-facing polygons will appear black. And there is an option to disable transparency for materials that store such information. In situations where the transparency has little or no effect to the end result, this option can be used as an optimization to speed up the rendering process. You can also tweak the trace depth which controls the number of reflection bounces. On top of that, there are controls for the cutoff threshold and the color space. For a more in-depth information regarding those settings, you can check out the VR scans documentation at docs.chaosgroup.com. Under all of those controls, there is an information section displaying some useful information contained in the VR scans file, such as the actual material sample size. With certain materials, you might want to make some changes to the placement. Such changes can be made in the texture placement rollout. You can tweak the UV offset or the UV channel here, for example. In this particular example, I'd like to rotate the material by 90 degrees. This way, instead of horizontal lines, I would get vertical lines. Let's render the image to take a look at the change. In the appearance rollout, you can use the gamma and saturation sliders to change the look of the material. Let's say I'd like to make the material to appear much darker and desaturated. I can change the gamma to something like 0.7 and also bring the saturation down to let's say 0.2. Let's render out the image to see the result. You could also change the color of the material using the filter or paint settings. I'll show you how those work in just a little bit. Since VR scan materials work perfectly well with V-Ray materials, you can use a V-Ray bump material together with the VR scan's wood material to create wooden planks for the floor. Let's create a V-Ray bump material and plug in a bump map into it. I have a plank pattern bump map that would work just fine. As for the base material, let's select the VR scan wood material from the list. Also, let's decrease the bump amount to 0.5.
Finally, let's apply the V-Ray bump material to the floor object and re-render the scene so we can see the results. Next, let's create a material for the carpet. Let me switch to the carpet camera and render the image. For the carpet, I'm going to use the fabric material that I've downloaded from the material library earlier. Let's create a new VR scan material, load it and make a test render. Obviously, the size is off. The material pattern needs to be smaller. Let's change the tiling factor to 10 for example and re-render the image. Now it looks much better. As mentioned earlier, the VR scan materials give the user a certain amount of flexibility and control over some of the material properties. For instance, I can easily change the color of the carpet material. Under the appearance rollout, you can notice several controls. The filter color can be used to tint the material. Keep in mind that tinting the material would affect the color of the reflections as well. Paint color option, on the other hand, can be used to change the color of the material without losing the texture or changing the reflection color. Let's change the color of the carpet material to blue and re-render the scene. You can easily try out different colors and shades until you find one that suits your scene needs best. Instead of using a flat color, you could also use a texture. If I click on the checker icon, I can select a texture such as this one and use it instead. Let me render the image once again to see the difference. I can use the same technique on the rest of the carpets as well. I've prepared a couple of such materials, so all I need to do here is just apply them to the carpet. Next thing I'd like to do is set up a material for the chair cushions. I've already created the material using the same approach as the one that I've already shown. Let's switch to the cushion camera, apply the material to the chair cushion and render the image. As I mentioned earlier, the VR scans work perfectly well together with all the standard V-Ray materials. I could use that to my benefit and create a patch over the leather surface. To accomplish that, I'm going to use the V-Ray Blend material. Let's create a new V-Ray Blend material. As a base material, I'm going to select the VR Scans leather material from the list. Let's add a coat layer. For the coat layer, we can use a standard V-Ray material. In this particular example, I'm going to use one of the preset V-Ray fabric materials that come with V-Ray for SketchUp. This is the material that I have selected. All I need to do now is just select it from the list in the cold layer. Blend amount is controlled by a grayscale color where the black color represents the base material and white color represents the cold material. Every grayscale value in between would be a mixture or a blend between those two materials. Instead of using a flat grayscale color for the blend amount though, I can use a texture map. I've prepared a simple black and white texture to serve as my blend amount texture map. Once it's all set, let's apply the blend material to the cushion object and render the scene. Finally, let's assign a VR scanned car paint material to one of the chairs in the scene. Let me switch to the chair camera, let's assign this car paint material that I've created and do a test render. Certain materials have a layer of clear coat such as the car paint material that I have currently selected. In the clear coat rollout, there are several settings that could be tweaked to achieve different look. You can turn off the reflections or the specular highlights for the material. By turning off the reflections, you can achieve a matte material look. The IOR value determines the index of refraction of the coat layer and based on that information, the strength of the reflections. A value of 1 disables the coat layer and doesn't produce any reflections. Higher values result in stronger clear coat reflections. The VR scans file typically contains the correct value for this parameter and it's automatically set when the material is loaded. 
Finally, the bump multiplier controls the strength of the code layer bump. The code layer has a built-in bump map stored in the VRScans material file. Let's tweak the bump multiplier and re-render a region of the image to see the difference. The tweaking of the bump multiplier is most noticeable in the reflections of the material. Also, let's disable the reflections and re-render the image again to see what it looks like. Let's wrap up with a final render of the whole scene. Switch to the render camera and click the render button. As of what to be expected in the development of the VR scans in the future, there are really exciting features already on the way. A support for render elements will be added, also there is going to be more control over displacement for materials using height maps. Geometry with bad UVs or no UVs would also be covered using a similar to triplanar mapping functionality. The VR scans materials would be able to be rendered using the V-Ray GPU. On top of that, they would be added in V-Ray for Rhino and V-Ray for Unreal. Finally, the VR scans material library would continue to grow even bigger and more diverse. In this video, we went over the VR scans material plugin, the technology behind it, together with examples of materials from the VR scans material library. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. Please give us your feedback, comment, or share it. Thank you for watching.